Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming along to today's meeting of the Planning Applications Committee. Um, I do make it just turn five o'clock. If we can go straight on to the agenda. Item number one is the evacuation procedure. So if the fire alarms go off, we'll treat them for real. Uh, we've not been told of any practices. Uh, so if we need to vacate the chamber, we can do it uh, <coughs> out the doors on either side, down the, the stairs, out the front door, meet across the road at the Yorkshire Bank. If anybody needs any assistance, give us a shout. We'll make sure that's provided. It's also a good time to remind people to either turn your phones onto silent or turn them off. And also today, as well as the council um, recording this meeting uh, and streaming it out <coughs> after the meeting, uh, I can see a camera down there in the public gallery as well. So um, it's clearly being filmed by uh, a member of the public as well. If anybody's got any objection to that, you need to let me, let me know. <coughs> Item number two is to receive apologies. I've had apologies from Councillor Ian Lloyd. Is that all, yeah? And item number three, to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 9th of January. Are you happy that I sign those? Agreed? Item number four is to receive declarations of disclosable pecuniary and other interests in accordance with the Member's Code of Conduct. No. Nope. Takes us on to item number five, which is declarations of contact. Any member? Councillor Bowman. Uh, chairman, on um, item three, 111 Bedworth Road, I've had significant contact over the telephone uh, with the uh, proposer, Mr. Allen, and I've also had contact with his neighbours, so uh, significant contact around this. I am, however, in a position where I am waiting to hear from officers the reasons for their judgments, and I'm prepared to suspend judgment until the moment is over. Thank you. declare that I have had contact um, from Councillor Condacor via the, I was copied into an email he sent into planners and also um, I was contacted by one of the neighbours in regard to item number five Newtown Road Bedworth <coughs> Councillor Wilson Thank you now from Councillor Condacor um, so I've had that Sorry about that. Um, that takes us on to item number six, applications for planning permission where the public have indicated they wish to speak. If I just run through that for those that, that don't know the process, is the officer will present the report. Uh, following on from that, we will take the speakers as listed on your sheet. And if I can ask members to please note that on item number two, we've got an extra speaker, which is Councillor Troman. So I'm intending to take it, take uh, Councillor Troman's after Michelle Condacor. Um, so once the officers uh, done their presentation, the speakers uh, I'll take in, in the order on the paper, as I've just said and you're allowed three minutes to make your presentation. Once the egg timer goes off, I will stop you. That's so that we're fair uh, to everybody on the, on the time. 
However, members of the committee may wish to seek points of clarification. It will only be to clarify something that you may have said during your presentation. Again, after that, uh, if the officers need to come back on anything that's been said, they will do. And then we'll move on to the debate. The debate will take place once something's been moved and seconded. That will enable that debate to start. Um, hopefully, we'll reach a decision today. We normally do. Um, occasionally, we defer items for site visits or for further information, um, as you'll see on one of them we've had today. Uh, so that's about that for that. So the, that takes us on then to item number one, which is the Church Lane Nuneaton. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Members will recall that this application was deferred from the previous committee to obtain more certainty over the requested planning obligations. The application is a full application for the erection of 162 dwellings with associated infrastructure, drainage, play and open space, landscaping materials and boundary <laughs> treatments. <clears throat> the application is partly retrospective in that, it, in that is, it is for retention of dwellings already constructed on phase two of the development underway at Church Fields off Weddington Road. The site area is in red on the plan before you. Planning permission was granted in outline form for the site for 326 dwellings following an appeal on the 20th of February 2012. This gave three years for the submission of all reserve matters on the site, thus expiring on the 20th of February 2015. However, the reserve matters for Phase 2 were subsequently submitted in July 2015, which was outside of the prescribed three-year time frame set by the condition. In order to regularise the situation, this full application has been submitted, which also encompasses the amendments that have been made to the reserve matters application for Phase 2, as set out in the planning history on the agenda. Some of the houses to which this application relates are constructed and occupied. Officers consider that the key issues to take into account are the principle of residential development, flooding, layout and residential amenity, and any legal planning obligations. There are other issues set out in the, in the committee agenda that I do not propose to cover in my presentation. In relation to the, to the principle of residential development, this is well established by the granting of the outline permission and the subsequent submission of reserve matters applications on both phases one and two. The need for housing land and a lack of a five-year housing land supply is well documented and the dwellings on this site do contribute to that. There have been no changes to the merits of this application that would alter the presumption in favour of sustainable development on this land. However, as this application is a full application, full consideration of the material considerations needs to be taken into account. In relation to flooding, the majority of the site is within Flood Zone 1, where there is the lowest risk of flooding. A small section of the site falls within Flood Zone 2, and as a consequence, the floor levels of the plots have been raised to remove the risk of future flooding highlighted with this purple hatched area on the plan. The development is providing an area of floodplain compensation on land to the south of the site, highlighted with green cross hatching. This ensures that the area of floodplain lost to the development is replaced elsewhere. In accordance with the conditions of the original outline permission, a flood attenuation pond has also been provided and is operational, highlighted by the green contouring on the plan. In addition, the development provides flooding alleviation across the wider catchment area, and as such, there are positive environmental benefits. There are several drainage features within the site. To ensure that these remain effective, a condition is proposed, condition 18, which is detailed on the agenda, along with an amended boundary treatment plan to allow for increased access to the drainage ditch. As set out on the agenda, the Environment Agency and County Flood Risk Team have no further comments to make and there are no implications for the overall drainage strategy. In relation to the layout and residential, amen residential amenity, the scale and type of dwellings have not really altered from the previous permission. There are they are similar to the types approved in Phase 1. However, as set out on the agenda, plot Two plots adjacent to 37 Church Lane were amended during the course of the previous application from bungalows to houses. These plots have not yet been constructed and the developer has agreed to move these plots a further 1.5 metres away from the property and introduce some landscaping for extra screening. The plots are circled in blue on the plan here and are shown in their amended location. 
The original planning application has a unilateral undertaking to address planning obligations. All existing contributions from that obligation are being carried through to the new legal agreement, with some minor wording changes depending on the works that have been completed. Payments have been made and trigger points for the payments that have been made and trigger points for the remaining works. There is also a requirement for 1.2 hectares of land to be retained in phase one of the development uh, for the whole site for for a doctor's surgery. This land is in the process of being offered to the NHS and will be included in the agreement if the land has not already been transferred. As members will be aware, the authority does not have a community infrastructure levy or SIL, but all requests for financial contributions should comply with the tests set out in the legislation. There has been only one additional request for Section 106 monies beyond those which were agreed previously from the George Elliott Hospital Trust for a financial contribution towards the provision of health services through the employment of agency staff at George Elliott Hospital. The exact contribution will be amended to take account of those properties already occupied, and the agent has now agreed to pay this contribution. The recommendation is therefore one of approval, subject to the completion of a legal agreement and the conditions set out on the agenda and addendum. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I'm sorry, I should have said to people, when you, when you speak, if you press the big button, that will start the microphone on. Councillor Condacore. Thank you very much, Chair. Oh, I'm in the unusual position of commenting on a planning application which was initially approved in outline six years ago and went to this committee three years ago, roughly, in 2015. There is no way we cannot approve this because the houses are being built and people are moving on to the site. So um, we need to look at why the plan permission went wrong and the issues so it never happens again. But I don't think realistically we can fail to approve this application today. But I did want to highlight the things that have happened before Christmas to try and mitigate some of the problems um, from last time in 2015 when the application was relatively rushed through. Um, one of the issues that's really important is the drainage and access to this culvert, which we've got um, Condition 18 in. So basically, by the church corner of the site, there's a low-lying area of ground with, which has got a culvert which blocks up. So since the application was made, we've agreed with the applicant to actually move the fences so this culvert can be cleared out and not to build those houses in that. You know, they showed a green bit and a hatch bit. That hatch bit, which, which is low-lying, should not be developed until they've actually sorted out the culvert and the drain under the church. So that is a good improvement. We also had the issue in the last application of a house that, that was actually switched from a bungalow to a house just a few weeks before it went to planning committee. The resident has actually complained to this application and the developer has agreed to move the house back about a metre and a half and do some planting to try and mitigate the change. So... Although we don't want this development, it's happening. We've tried to work as much as we can to mitigate it, to sort out the drainage and the flooding. And I think we've done as good a job as we can with the limitations of the planning system. So I'm not asking you to reject this application. Yeah, we, it needs to go ahead, and it probably should have gone ahead before Christmas. I, I just want you to understand the history of this and also to understand that we shouldn't get in this mess again. So we need to learn the lessons from where this application went wrong three years ago so we don't have houses built without planning application and my residents le left in limbo having moved into a house that's actually technically not got permission. And one final thing just to mention is when this went to planning, the air quality assessment assumed that the air quality would go down by 20% over four years in the Eton Road Geratory and this development would add 3% to the air quality problems so it is interesting looking back over an application from six years ago how they predicted a 20 percent improvement in air quality that hasn't happened thank you chair any points of clarification no. thank you, chair at for davidson's um i've come here today just to say that when we submitted the original application it was submitted in good faith we didn't actually know at the time that we'd submitted out, out, outside of that time. It was subsequently registered 
um, by the local authority and passed. So we've been building there now for the past sort of two years or so, not knowing. As soon as it was brought to my attention that this had come up, I contacted Catherine Morton straight away and highlighted her of the issue. So we were never trying to hide away from this, and we just wanted to sort it out for the residents who live there and our future residents. So it was then really how could we mitigate this and actually pull this together. So that's why we're here this evening to try and do that. So that's all I have to say on that, really. Thank you. Okay. Any points of clarification? No? <coughs> Anything at this stage? No? In that case, to enable debate to take place, can I move the recommendation which is to grant planning permission subject to a legal agreement and the conditions printed? Is that seconded? Any member? <coughs> Councillor Pomfrey. Uh, thank you, Chair. By one of the speakers, I'm not sh sure of all the ins and outs of it, but it's to do with the, the corner of this site, which it was very wet, let's put it like that. I'd like some sort of technical details as, as to how this situation is going to be uh, mitigated, please. Thank you. As I understand it, the... Um, Proposed, the proposal is to um, include this uh, drainage attenuation area. Um, In terms of the mitigation, um, the purple cross hatching area, which you can see here, is a low lying area. Um, and, and on that basis, it's going to be reprofiled so that the flood water doesn't collect there. Um, in relation to the uh, attenuation detention base, sorry, yes, yeah, stormwater detention basin, that's located here. That's already uh, in operation, and the Environment Agency have agreed that that and the um, local flooding authority have considered that that's acceptable in relation to flood water. Um, and because the development is being built um, over the majority of Flood Zone 1, but some of Flood Zone 2, what we have to ensure is that the area available for flooding isn't reduced. So that is shown by this green cross-hatching here to improve the amount of flood water um, availability. So if this floods over, it will, it will go into that area. In relation to the ditches and things that are on the site, um, the condition 18 is agreed by the Environment Agency as well. They're happy that that condition will make sure that there is no worsening of the situation in relation to flooding. Forgive me, it's been a little while since I actually read that condition, so let me just have a quick look at it. Yeah, it relates to um, head walls and filter drains and all sorts of things in relation to flooding on the site to ensure that flooding isn't going to be worsened on the site. So I, I didn't deal with the application, so I'm a little bit uh, at a loss with this, with that particular bit. Councillor Wilson. Give my comments. Can I ask the officers to provide an explanation from their point of view, how the situation was allowed to occur, that development was occurring in this borough without planning consent, because I have some very grave reservations about that, um, and particularly for residents who have theoretically been left in a legal limbo between finding out and waiting for us to make up our minds. That concerns me greatly. Yeah, that's fine, Chair. Um, although I didn't deal with the scheme, I, I believe it was just a simple uh, administration error and the, and the dates were mixed up. Um, and the application was registered when it, sh it shouldn't really have been because it was submitted after the date uh, that the, co the condition prescribed. Um, obviously, the situation uh, is, is not ideal. Um, it's far from it. Um, but it's obviously um, something that we've, we've all taken on board and we're, we'll be much more, obviously, uh, careful of in the future. Um, but I think it was, a, it was a genuine mistake at the time. 
and it happens in all sorts of sectors but i think given the amount of development which is going to be taking place across the borough over the next 10 15 20 years that is something which is systemic which i hope officers and the chain of command will take forward because not only as councillors but residents need to be assured that things are happening correctly and properly but with regard to this application chair um I feel as if I have no choice but to vote for it. I'm not in the habit of bulldozing people's houses. Had there been no one left there, the naughty side of me might have been tempted to say, you built these incorrectly, you pay your money, you take your chances to whether the committee approves it or not. But to an extent, I feel as if I'm voting under duress. Because what are we going to do to the residents who are living there if we refuse it? No one can give me that answer. Um, could appeal it, and, but they'll be left in legal limbo. So this isn't a position which any councillor on planning should be left in the position of having to feel as if they're voting under duress. And I will vote for it, but if it happens again, I think um, once bitten, twice shy, that there should be some repercussions if this does happen again, Chair. In regards to that, it, you know, it's a fair point to, to raise because we can't argue against it. I did go into the office and ask the question about it and, and I actually do believe that it was a technical error, error uh, by both parties really, but you know both parties have put their hands up to it and so I think the message has gone across and if it, if it hasn't already then I'll ask Claire and Darren uh, to make sure they go back to the uh, sort of management team. Uh, just to reinforce that, so so that it it can it, it doesn't happen again, um, as best we can. Okay. Right. Any other member? No. The recommend. Not missed anything, have I? The recommendation is as printed to grant planning permission, subject to that legal agreement and the conditions printed. All those in favour of that. And against? And abstentions? Okay, so that's, that's approved. Okay, if we can move on to item number two. Uh, Watling Street... Nuneaton. And just in um, as I said, Councillor Tromans is down to speak. It seems a bit odd because I've got Councillor Condacore down as the ward councillor and Councillor Tromans down as the ward councillor. I think that's purely because the, the majority of the application site is within Weddington, uh, but some of the access points uh, are, are in St. Saint, Saint Nicholas. Okay. So I'm trying to be fair, that's why I've allowed uh, Councillor Tromans to be able to speak. Okay, Claire. Thank you. This application is on Calendar Farm, Nuneaton, and is for the erection of up to 850 dwellings with vehicular access, a mixed-use local centre, including retail development and community buildings, with uses A1 to A5, D1 and D2 use classes. Also proposed is a primary school, a rest area to replace the laybys on the A5. There's also green infrastructure with an open space network with footpaths, cycleways, children's play space, sports pitches and sustainable drainage. Existing agricultural buildings and numbers 160 and 162, the long chute, are to be demolished. It's an outline application, but includes access as a reserved matter, which deals with access into the site, not the layout within. This application has been submitted with an environmental impact assessment, which aims to protect the environment by ensuring that a local planning authority, when deciding whether to grant planning permission for a project, which is likely to have significant effects on the environment, does so in the full knowledge of what those likely significant effects are and takes them into account in the decision-making process. The site is the land associated with Calendar Farm 
and is actually phase two of the development. Phase one is shown here on this um, excerpt from the master plan. This is the Cresswells farm site. That site has been purchased by Gelson and the reserve matters application for that part of the land is under consideration. As members will see from the agenda, there have been several letters of objection covering a variety of topics. Officers consider that the key issues with this application are the principle of residential development on this site, travel, transportation and highway safety, open spaces and ecology, noise and air quality, and finally planning obligations. There are lots of other issues identified on the report, but I do not propose to cover these in my verbal report to you. As has been stated several times to members in previous committees, the Council does not have a five-year land supply. However, should the forthcoming Borough Plan Inquiry find that the plan is sound, this will change. At the present time, the borough cannot demonstrate a five-year land supply to meet the identified housing need, and this is a matter that weighs significantly in favour of this application. Land classification policies, such as ENV2 and ENV3, which cover some of this site in the 2006 borough plan, are designed to prevent the spread of development, but they are now considered out of date, because the council cannot demonstrate that five-year land supply. It's clear, therefore, that these policies cannot be taken into account when determining this application. As members will be aware, the borough plan is progressing. Stage two of the hearings are due to take place next month. It is made clear in the National Planning Policy Framework, NPPF, that due weight can be given to emerging plans with regards to the stage of preparation, any unresolved objections, and the degree of consistency with other NPPF policies. Part of the land is allocated at present in the Emerging Borough Plan as housing land under policy HSG1, which you can see is identified in red on the plan before you. The remainder of the application site is identified in blue and this falls within a landscape buffer which is mentioned in policy HSG1. The landscape buffer element to this policy has received objections and therefore only limited weight has been given to it as this will be discussed in the forthcoming stages of the local plan hearing. In order to mitigate impact on the landscape buffer the developer has removed some of the initially proposed development as indicatively shown on the master plan on the previous screen, leaving a considerable setback. It's therefore considered that this is now acceptable, taking into account the five-year land supply and the limited weight that this buffer can be given. In relation to travel, transportation and highway safety, access to the site is being considered with this application. There are two points of access into the site from the highway network and a third access point proposed linking through an adjacent site which is still under consideration and out onto Higham Lane. The first point of access here is off the A5, the second point here is off the long chute and the third point here is within the site. The first point of access is to the north onto the A5. This junction is proposed to be a signalised junction, but also accommodates a rest area within the site that caters for a lorry park as well as car parking spaces. This rest area is to replace the laybys that are on the A5 that will be lost as a result of the proposed access. Highways England have commented on the application as they are the body that is responsible for the A5 and are happy with the proposals subject to a condition on the management of this rest area that is on your agendas. The second point of access is out onto the long chute and through phase one of the calendar farm site which I've previously mentioned as Cresswell's farm. This site received planning permission separately to the rest of the site for up to 150 dwellings. The detailed layout for this site is currently under consideration. 
but in order to upgrade and increase the capacity of this junction from the currently approved scheme, a traffic light system is proposed for this development. This involves the relocation of some bus stops on Higham Lane and the de and demolition of two dwellings on the long chute, which you can see hatched both sides here. Local residents have objected to the impact that the relocated bus stops would have on access to their property, but the positioning of bus stops is not a matter that actually requires planning permission, and the moving of them could actually be carried out by the County Council without consent from this borough. Highways have confirmed that they are generally happy with the design of this junction. The third access is through a proposed link road that will run through this site and join up at a point to the northwest of the application site and continue on through to Higham Lane. This is signified here as an indicative position. There is a condition suggested on the addendum, condition 34, to secure the delivery of this access. Further discussions have taken place since the report was originally written and contrary to the final paragraph on page 39, extending over to page 40, the number of dwellings is further limited. Warwickshire County Council have assessed the capacity of the local highway network on the long chute, and to ensure that there is no additional significant impact, they have requested that a condition that only allows 10 houses on this site to be accessed solely from this junction prior to its signalisation. However, if another point of access can be achieved elsewhere, either to the north using the A5 or at a point to the northwest of the site and out onto Higham Lane or elsewhere through other development, then 200 dwellings can be occupied. Before the occupation of the 600th dwelling, the link road out onto the A5 must be provided. Subject to the imposition of conditions, neither the County Council Highways or Highways England object to the development. In relation to open spaces and ecology, the development proposes approximately 16.2 hectares of green infrastructure and open space to the north of the site indicated here. This open space includes a community park, playing pitches, children's play, teenage provision and allotments. A pedestrian link and cycle network is proposed through the site. Parks and countryside have been consulted and do not object to the provision of this, subject to the imposition of conditions. On the site there is a badger set, and with the approval of housing development surrounding this site, there is a much reduced area for foraging available. As such, a condition is suggested that ensures that a mitigation plan is submitted to the council to ensure there's no undue impact on the badgers. In relation to noise and air quality, the site is located close to the A5, and as such there would be some noise expected for the school and the dwellings closest to the A5 and from the proposed rest area. So this is indicatively where the houses could be located, and the proposed school is down here, also indicatively. The location to the A5 with the rest area in this location could result in some noise. However, development in the indicative master plan has actually been moved away from the A5 and as such the impact from noise on the residential properties from the A5 is lessened. There are conditions suggested to ensure that acceptable noise levels are achieved within the dwellings closest to these potential noise sources. There is, however, a potential impact from noise from the A5 and the rest area on the areas of open space, and if this is too great, there is a concern that the open space may not be utilised. As such, a condition is suggested that requires a noise bund to wrap around the open space, protecting it from noise from these sources. Turning to air quality, studies carried out with the application in the Environmental Impact Assessment indicate that whilst there will be an increase in the concentrations of particulate matter and nitrogen dioxide, the increases will be negligible in relation to the current situation. 
This, I understand, is due to the routing of HGVs being likely to change as a result of new accesses proposed within the development. Subject to the imposition of conditions, environmental health have no objections relating to either noise or air quality. As members are aware, the NPPF sets out that planning obligations should be considered where otherwise unacceptable development could be made acceptable, but should only be sought if they meet three tests, being necessary, directly related to the development, and fairly and reasonably related to the development in kind. As you will see from the table on your agenda, there have been requests for Section 106 legal obligations from a number of bodies. The developer has scrutinised these requests and is agreeable to paying the majority of contributions, namely the George Elliott Hospital Trust, Warwickshire County Council Education, the NHS Primary Care, this council's leisure facilities, Warwickshire Police, County Highway Improvements, Public Transport, County Council Cycling and our own Parks and Countryside. As set out on the addendum, there has been an amendment to the contributions sought by the county education team in that they now want the contributions for the secondary school to go towards the proposed new school on the top farm site that is currently under consideration. And if this does not come to fruition, they will be renegotiated for other schools within the borough. As this is an outline application for up to 850 dwellings and the final numbers of houses is not yet known, there are actually no figures or amounts of money specified at present as, as the final contribution. But all amounts will be determined by a formulaic approach which will be set out in the legal agreement. The recommendation is therefore one of approval subject to the completion of a legal agreement and the conditions as set out on the agenda and addendum. Thank you. OK, thanks, Claire. Just, it, it was remiss of me not to say that we do have Ben Sim from uh, Warwickshire County Council Highways if there's any questions regarding the highways a bit later on. So our first speaker is Councillor Condacore. Thank you very much. The majority of this site, the access in the lower bit is in St Nicholas Ward. Fundamentally, the thing I wanted to mention was air quality. It is inconceivable that 850 homes, 2,000 odd people and a retail centre will generate zero air quality impact. We, we've got the data that went with the air quality report that clearly shows far more cars on the road network, but what has happened is lorries and buzzes, HGVs, have disappeared off the road network, particularly around the Eton Road gyratory, yeah, Old Inkley Road, Leicester Road, and also on Eastborough Way. This thing that lorries will be diverted, where to? We need to defer this application and find out what the transport modelling is for lorries, because a lorry produces about six to eight times more pollution than a car. If, for example, on one site you take away... 50 lorries and had 350 cars, that can be said to have no impact. But those 50 lorries haven't vanished. Where do they go? It is clear there is something seriously wrong with the modelling, particularly of HGVs. And this application coming three weeks before the borough plan hearings, we do not know what the road network is, what mitigation is going to be proposed. But what we do know is these lorries that go over the Leicester Road Bridge at the moment are either continuing going over the Leicester Road Bridge or they're going round the Eastborough Way and going through Atterborough. And if you look at Atterborough, there's the houses right by the mini roundabout, um, Harefield Road, Gats, uh, Get, um, Gadsby Street, right on the road. So if we reduce the lorries going through Old Hinkley Road, they're going to go through Atterborough. And so we need to know what the impact of this is in terms of air quality, where the lorries are going, because at the moment it's just magic. We put basically a quarter on the size top side of Wellington and St Nick's and the traffic doesn't make any more pollution that is not plausible and we need to know what improvements are being made and where things are going because lorries do not vanish and they do not just go down the A5 if we've got more houses more bus services and a retail centre all those lorries must go somewhere and at the moment the Eton Road gyratory as you know, is very polluted, and Atterborough isn't even measured. We have no pollution monitoring on the A4250 through Atterborough. 
until you get to coat and arches. There is a serious problem, and it should be brushed aside. The second thing I wanted to mention was the secondary school. Absolutely essential we have schools. Um, and yeah, Top Farm may not happen. Top Farm could happen five or ten years later. Why is this open-ended that we'll just do something? Why hasn't this application got a secondary school on it? There's all sorts of things which, if this was done after the borough plan, we'd know where we stand. This application is premature, and if you kicked it out today and brought it back again after we had some certainty, a lot of things would be clearer. Thank you, Chair. Clarification. No. <coughs> Michelle Condacore. Sorry. Um, yeah, I've got you know, numerous concerns. I, I did put in a very long objection and things which hopefully people have been allowed to see and read. Um, my concerns are, it's one, on one side, the borough plan is being used as the reason that we need these things, that we haven't got enough houses, and these were the figures are coming from the borough plan. And then on another bit, and saying, oh, well, it doesn't, it, the borough plan doesn't matter but with regarding this landscape buffer. There has been an objection from the planning policy team saying about the landscape buffer. Develop development must not extend beyond the northern boundary of the site in order to preserve a farmland buffer, this, the northern boundary of the site being what was proposed in the borough plan, SHG1. Um, preserve a farmland buffer between the A5 and the edge of residential development. The northern boundary should also be enhanced to soften the development edge through new hedgerow and tree planting, along with small copses of trees in field corners. So on one side, they're saying there must be this boundary, and suddenly this boundary doesn't actually matter. Things, it only has limited weight and things. And the, it doesn't matter that you can suddenly put a, a road th through that. And so that is you know, a big concern of mine. Lots of agricultural land considered not significant because it's only this small bit. But that's been said on every application we've had all around that part of Nuneaton and things. So now it is significant. Where is our food to be grown? In terms of safety and things, I have, you know, this lorry park is a big I issue. There seems to be nothing that I could find in things, actually any agreement as to who is going to own, you know, be in charge of it. Even the police said... The, and I quote from that, I have serious concerns due to the crime implications. It could, if it's not locked, and if it is locked, who, who's in charge of that? If it's not locked, you know, got fly tipping, travellers, all sorts of potential issues. You've got, if you've got a lorry park there and you've got the pedestrian and cycle access to the site going from there, huge safety issue things. There's no connection between the site and the other developments that we've already got, i.e. St Nicholas Park and the Bellway development. And from what I can understand, this development would be at a different level from the Bellway development that's currently half, well, a lot of it's already built and things. So there's not even able to be a connection. We've got that one right of way, which originally they said would be a cycle link, that seems to have just disappeared into the ether. But that's the only link between this site and St Nicholas Park. Now, if we're going to get another development, we need connection between the existing um, you know, pro uh, properties and what have you and things, so that we can... It's a muddy path and things, and there's nothing about upgrading that. So that's just you know, a number of the issues I have. Thank you, Sean. No? Councillor Trimans. Thank you, Chair. As people are well aware, I'm not in favour of all of the developments that have happened in the northeast of Nuneaton. I've campaigned and spoken and voted against all the developments that were not brownfield or uh, sustainable long-term earmarked. It, it's really felt sometimes for the people that live in, in that part of town that it's been overdevelopment, not just development, because we've had no meaningful infrastructure delivery um, to mitigate against that. But I believe in democracy and the controlling group um, uh, have managed to take, take, keep control of the Borough Council and so that gives them the mandate to, to, to press ahead with their development plans. So as a supporter of democracy, I accept where we are and now I think I'm looking to make the best of the situation that we're in. And for possibly the first time for, uh, in my area for any application that's come forward, we have a development that might do some good and produce some infrastructure. 
a new school and a section of much needed road access to the north and to the A5. Um, and uh, although the borough plan isn't in place and we can't charge community infrastructure levy, uh, there are some nonetheless very welcome section 106 agreements to go towards a range of areas from health to policing. I did have huge concerns about the rest area though. But after being in dialogue with officers, I've received reassurances about the operation and management of this facility. And officers have also amended the proposed planning commission uh, conditions to ensure that the proper boundary rails or some other security measures will be in place to prevent unauthorised encampments um, at the rest area. And I thank officers for that. The other concerns I have relate to the impact of the development on established communities. Historically, it's always been left to Warwickshire County Council highways to seek conditions relating to wheel washes, road sweepers and the like. Uh, more recently, borough planning officers have put these conditions in, for example, where I made a request at the time of the application to build on land opposite Horston Grange. Those conditions have proved invaluable. Uh, and I would like to record the thank my thanks to both the borough and county officers who followed up on those conditions when the developer let the road get into a really very bad state indeed, several times. Without those conditions, the situation would have been truly dreadful and dangerous, and I feel sure that this committee will, uh, will also want to ensure that a full range of conditions relating to wheel washes and mud, dust, minimisation are put in place for each phase of this development too and I would ask you to condition that accordingly. Thank you, Chair. Are there any, any points of clarification? No. David Stentiford. And, uh, we are aware from phase one of this development that there is significant and legitimate concern about how traffic growth is dealt with, particularly given the growth in dwelling numbers required in order to provide for the emerging plan numbers. In the light of those concerns, we undertook a public consultation exercise in March 2016, and we asked the public about their views concerning a possible direct link from the site to the A5 Watling Street. That option received support, but was of course not an option that had been considered as part of the emerging plan allocation. The assessment of highway implications of the emerging plan is the responsibility of the County Highways Authority and Highways England. In preparation of evidence for the plan examination, the County have commissioned a model known as Paramix, which contains details of existing traffic flows in the borough, and that model can be run with different development scenarios to determine the impacts of those scenarios. One of the reasons this application has been on deposit for so long has been that we have been working with the County, and we've commissioned a specific modelling of the network with the local plan allocations and incorporating the proposed A5 link. What that modelling has shown is an overall improvement to the network as a consequence of the provision of the A5 junction, much as the public consultation exercise had anticipated. In the meantime, our consultants have been in liaison with Highways England, who see benefits from the new junction in terms of easing the congestion on the A5 long shoot junction, and in safety terms by providing an alternative to the existing laybys, which are substandard, owing to the lack of space to provide a splitter and barrier with the main carriageway. The new rest area will be subject to planning conditions ensuring that it is properly monitored, managed and maintained to avoid adverse, adverse implications in the wider area. All of these negotiations have taken many months and the final professional conclusion is that the addition of the A5 link offers significant benefits to the borough. The link has implications for the boundary of the site with the A5, anticipated in the emerging plan, but officers have confirmed in the recommendation that the landscaping proposed in this application associated with the new community park will provide an appropriate northern boundary to the development. The scheme now before you unlocks the HSG1 site and is a critical element in demonstrating the deliverability of the HSG1 allocation, a matter which the local plan inspector will be examining in only four weeks' time. Supporting the officer's recommendation today will send a strong positive message to the local plan examination. As you will see, conditions have been agreed which will ensure the site connects properly with its neighbours and agreements have been reached to ensure that all implications of the development in terms of local services and infrastructure improvements are addressed in the Section 106 agreement. I commend the officer's report to members. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Councillor Bonner. Thank you, Chair. This, uh, this site, uh, uh, developing this site, would reduce the HGVs on the long shoot. Well, well, how will it do that? You know, we don't want you to uh, put HGVs through a housing development. So, how's that going to happen, please? 
Chair, I didn't say that it would reduce um, HGV movements in the long shoot. I don't know where we got that impression. Um, what the traffic modelling does show is that the distribution of HGV movements will change as a consequence of the A5 link. And what that means is that in certain locations, HGV movements will actually be lower than in the current state's affairs. But naturally, those HGVs, as Councillor Condacor has said, will move to other locations. But the overall air quality assessment demonstrates that in, no, in none of the air quality monitoring as assessment points that have been available to be analysed do the impacts increase by more than 1%. And from that point of view, they're deemed accept acceptable in environmental health terms. I don't know if that helps with your question, Councillor. Okay. Pumphrey. Thank you. Um, um, arrangements made for the management of this rest area. Could you give me some reassuring words that this is going to work? Thank you. Do are covered by the planning conditions which are written into the report. And if the site gets its planning permission, then it will be an obligation on the, those developing the site to come forward with detailed management plans to demonstrate exactly how all aspects of the management, maintenance and control of the area will be undertaken. And those details will need to be agreed by your planning officers and may need, indeed come back to members. The precise details of that will only come forth when the precise details of the arrangements for the layout of the site uh, are available to us. Any other points of clarification? No? Does he need to come back at this point? Ben, at this point, you may get questions during the debate, I think. In that case, then, to enable debate to take place, can I move the recommendation which is the grant planning permission subject to a legal agreement and the conditions printed. Any member? Councillor Longdon. <laughs> Forgot that bit. <laughs> okay, it's been, it's been moved and seconded. Any member? Councillor Wilson. I'm slightly confused by some of the things which are on the paperwork and the addendum, so perhaps you could clear things up for me. If we look at page 30 of the report it says objections from mbbc parks and countryside and mbbc policy i'm assuming the policy one is about the buffer going beyond the hsg one site under the borough plan what was the parks and countryside one so that's actually been resolved it was in relation to um the uh a buffering and provision of um bunding to the A5 in relation to the, the noise potentially around the site, so that has been agreed. Right, OK, and the other one I've got is on the addendum before we came into the meeting, it says, under consultation response, please add Highways England as an objector. I'm not sure why that's on there. They do not object, and I've suggested conditions. So they do, they do not object to the proposal at all. Uh, that is an error. I haven't seen this until tonight, so that's an error. Right, because I was slightly confused, because you'd said something in your report about them consenting to something, then it says on here about that, so that confused me. So thank you for clearing that up. Uh, talking about in the meeting before planning committee chair about indicative drawings and how useful they are uh, in comparison to outline applications and so forth. I want to say from the outset that I think of all the applications I've seen around Weddington and St Nicholas, this is probably the best thought out in terms of the community facilities. Uh, which can be given to local residents, because all the other ones which have come forward would be Weddington Fields along the Long Chute, um, Eastborough Way, etc. It seems as if the developers have gone for broke in terms of maximising profit without putting anything back into the community. So I am pleased to see that there are things like a school uh, plan in there, that there are things like community facilities and, and play areas. But I do still have some concerns, and it's probably been made worse, actually, by the indicative drawing. Um, because, like Councillor Condacor, I cannot envisage how adding 850 uh, dwellings to an area will not have an impact, either plus or minus, on an air quality of an area. Um, so I am concerned about that. And what concerns me even more is the fact that with that buffer of land at the top, which is beyond the HSG1 allocation, where it's proposed to be used, we're putting um, a play area right by the A5. Although there will be some 
things around it. The A5 is effectively, at certain points a day, a mini motorway uh, with a significant amount of traffic going forward and backwards and the resulting pollution that causes. And having children in that particular area where there is increased pollution concerns me and the position of the school concerns me where it's proposed. Because, again, that is by the A5 and children are particularly susceptible to pollution problems in their formative years and this is a primary school so that concerns me um, about that side and so potentially the indicative drawing has made my thinking a bit worse on this um, I've tried to think about any other school in the borough where it, as close, it is as close to such an, a main arterial route as this and I'm struggling to think of one uh, and that is probably weighing quite considerably in my reasoning for refusal on, on, on this one. That's my own personal view. Um, it's proposed for up to a two-form entry in Weddington pri on that primary school, which is proposed. It says up to, so it could be a one-form entry, it could be a two-form entry. Going forward, and this is about sustainability, most primary schools that I can think of as well are like three or four form entry so I'm not sure how even though they're leaving the land available for potential expansion I'm not sure we are at this stage future proofing because you're going to have those 850 houses and the kids that will need to go there and all the other surrounding areas where we are building um, I am grateful to see at the last minute a change to the conditions about where the 106 money was going to go for secondary provision because I, I tried to get some information out of Catherine Morton. She seemed as stumped as me about um, the requirement for sending money over to Hartsill, which isn't in the borough, and the kids weren't even going to go to Hartsill. It would have been in the catchment area. So I am pleased to see that. But my main concern is about that outline thing and the fact that 850 cars, potentially, so double that effectively because most families are two-car fam two families, that area is not coping at the moment. It will take at least 15 to 20 years to build that out, and I cannot see, with this application alone, how it is going to help the traffic situation in an already dire end of the borough. So on those grounds about the traffic, the pollution, and the school, I'm going to vote to refuse. And you as a member? Councillor Pomfret. Picked up already about uh, this rest area. It's reassuring to know that there'll be bunds there to make it secure against uh, unwanted visitors and so on. But I do wonder about having, I think it's 23 vehicles being able to park there, presumably 24-7. The existing laybys are obviously available all day and all night. Uh, quite near to houses, uh, quite secluded. It's um, obviously off the main highway there. And I was wondering... Um, I assume it's because of the proximity of junctions why the existing laybys couldn't be expanded, as was mentioned in uh, the, the developer's uh, three minutes. Uh, I'm, I'm quite concerned about that, and it also takes up quite a lot of space from the, um, from, from the area which is supposed to provide a barrier between the development and the A5 when you'd have thought facilities for vehicles would be better spread out along uh, the A5. Uh, some expert uh, information on that would be welcome. Thank you, Chair. Does anybody want to... Who's going to... Ben, is it you? OK. England, but I can speak on behalf of Warwickshire County Council on what we expect. The laybys have not been extended. You are quite right, because they would sit within visibility space. Um, but also there's a move away from lay-by provision because there isn't sufficient services to support HGV drivers. There's a general move to having dedicated facilities with services such as showers and toilet facilities um, that provide those necessary functions for HGV drivers rather than using uh, just laybys on the side of the road which don't have any of those facilities. And that's the reason why we as Warwickshire support that approach rather than laybys. And, and I'm, I'm, I don't want to speak on half of England, but I'm guessing that's the same approach for themselves. Um, however, the, main t the ongoing maintenance still needs to be resolved and we've got a sufficient condition for that. OK, thank you. Councillor Bonner. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd like a little bit more reassurance about the two schools here were, were uh, possibly. 
the last time I saw a school drawn on a, a proposed development, uh, it was quite close to an existing primary school. It's one of the few developments that we did actually stop. Uh, it was the one off uh, Gypsy Lane. Uh, and when I questioned the developer about this new primary school and um, what the discussions had been with Warwickshire County Council Education Authority, I was told there hadn't been any uh, discussions. So I'm hoping that's not the case this time. Uh, as somebody's all rightly said, we need quite a large primary school if it's going to accommodate uh, the children in the surrounding area. Uh, my other concern is the possibility of eventual secondary school because I understand from the Education Authority there's quite a lot, quite a large capacity in one of our existing schools in the town in the west side of town. You can't get much further west for a secondary school than the, the Neaton Academy. Uh, and yet here we've got a, lots of housing developments. You can't get much further east. So we've got existing uh, capacity in, in one school that's several miles away. And I'm not sure as catchment areas come into it anymore uh, because I know a lot of schools have a lot of secondary schools have children travelling many, many miles to get to school. So I don't know if anybody here can answer or can give me any more reassurances, but I'm always quite sceptical since that Gypsy Lane uh, development uh, application about seeing schools drawn onto housing developments. Thank you. Claire, please. I do know that the um, applicant in this instance has been in contact with the Education Authority and certainly the infrastructure team at the County Council um, discussing the provision. And originally there was only the provision for the primary school and as a result of the discussions, that's why there is now land that has been reserved for future expansion. So I know that discussions have been ongoing in relation to this particular site. In relation to the size of the school, we can only expect this developer to mitigate his own impacts. We can't expect them to mitigate the impacts of everybody else's development elsewhere. Um, the County Council are looking to secure a second, secondary school um, to the north of Nuneaton on the top farm site, which is their own planning application. Um, and what they've asked for in this application is that a financial contribution towards secondary education is given to that school, but if that doesn't come to fruition, then they will look at capacity elsewhere on existing schools to deal with um, the, 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 the secondary education for the people on this site. So in terms of, again, going back to the, the primary school, we can only expect them to deal with the capacity and deal with the issues on this particular site, but we are looking at future-proofing to have area for expansion to deal with any others so we can get financial contributions from other sites to deal with the new school that's proposed on this site. OK, thank you. Can I come back on that one, please, Chair? I'm... I understand, then, that each housing development can be asked for the education needs for primary schools only on its own, within its own boundaries. So that seems a bit ridiculous to me that we, you know, it's not happening, but we would end up with lots of little tiny schools. Uh, and there you've just contradicted yourself by saying as the developer is responsible for the uh, pr primary school requirements on this site, and yet we're going to ask them to pay for secondary school on another. So I'm, I'm, I'm even more confused now than I was before. Every development that is individually considered, as I set out in my presentation, the developer can only be expected to mitigate the impact that their development has. So we couldn't ask them to provide a 24-form nursery school and pay for everything for it in relation to that site. What, we, what has been negotiated is that there is a sufficient size of school and sufficient land for expansion to deal with the expected numbers of pupils around this area. So although they're providing the land, they then won't be expected to provide um, more contributions for other areas uh, that they're not actually relating to. In relation to the secondary school site, because they're not providing that on their own site, then they will have to pay to mitigate the impacts of this development through a 106 obligation to another school in whatever format that takes. Is that clearer? 
Okay, thank you. I've got myself down, but is there any other member before that? Okay. No, I just wanted to uh, make a couple of points. I wanted to reassure Councillor Tromans, uh, particularly, I know he's been a member of this committee before, is that this Planning Applications Committee makes its decisions based on the information given to us, uh, because it was mentioned a couple of times, I don't know why, about the controlling group of the Council. Uh, that has no, nothing to do with this Planning Applications Committee. We will determine applications on their own merits. Um, if I have a, a concern over anything, and I think a number of people have already raised it, I don't think it would do any harm to raise it again because it will have to come back to us if, if things come back in a detailed form. And that is about the rest area. Uh, because it will need to be properly managed, so I, I want to know who's going to manage it. I accept you can't tell us now, but if this goes through today, if it goes through, then uh, certainly we want that detail on how that's going to be done. Where I do... Um, in regards to that, sometimes planning applications can also make improvements to, to some things, and I actually see that that, um, that that area, the parking up place, the rest area, is making the A5 a bit safer uh, because the current designs having laybys and then slow vehicles pulling out onto fast roads to me doesn't seem the safest way. So I, I can actually see that having a benefit of improving the safety on the A5. Um, I also just wanted to, uh, because I don't know the answer, uh, Mrs Condacore raised a thing. She seemed to think that the new managed site would be a problem with crime. And I can actually see that being the other way around. That if it's a properly managed site, it would probably it would improve any crime. Because um, at the moment, I don't know about the, these particular laybys on this part of the A5, but a lot of the problems arrive... Uh, from uh, wagons being parked up in, in laybys as it is now. So I could see that if we've got a properly managed site being a further improvement. Right, anything to finish on, Claire or Ben? No? Just to add a little bit to the um, information about the rest area, um, the condition requires the um, provision of electric hookups. So in relation to potential noise from the rest area, this should actually alleviate a problem in that although the lorries will have to pass by some houses to get to the rest area, it means that their engines and refrigeration units won't have to be ticking all night. They will be able to do an electric hookup, which will eliminate the noise. So that is actually, again, another improvement. OK, thank you. It's been moved... And seconded the recommendation, which is to grant planning permission subject to a legal agreement and the conditions printed. Just bearing in mind, if, if that does happen, it's going to come back to us at some point anyway. Um, all those in favour of that? And against? I think that's it. And abstentions, I think that's it. Okay, so that's, that's approved. Thank you. Okay, we could move on to item number three, please. 111 Bedworth Road, Bulkington. Darren? Yep. Thank you, Chair. This application is an outline application for the erection of one dwelling to the rear of 111 Bedworth Road, Bulkington. 
which is a resubmission following a previous refusal. The application, the application site is located to the rear of 111 Bedworth Road, which is a normal residential property. The site has hard standing as, and is enclosed by fencing, ranging from 1.8 to 2 metres. In front of the fence are small conifers. Although the site is divided from the existing garden land to the rear of 111 Bedworth Road, the site is still considered to be garden land and is therefore not considered previously developed land, despite the site being partly laid in hard standing. The site has other residential properties surrounding it. The key issues to consider in this application are the principle of the development, the impact on residential amenity, the impact on visual amenity and the impact on highway safety. As is now well documented, the council cannot demonstrate a five-year land supply of housing land and this weighs significantly in favour of, of the proposal. The development is situated in what is effectively the rear amenity space of 111 Bedworth Road, Bulkington. This is classed as backland development and as such the residential design guide and national guidance and case law states that this should be resisted. Taking the site location and context into account, it is considered by officers that the proposal would not relate well to the established group of neighbouring dwellings, but be set apart, creating a more isolated form of development. The distances between the proposal, <coughs> the proposal and the existing surrounding residential properties complies with the distance standards within the residential design guide, and as such, there is considered to be no significant harm to the residential amenity of surrounding properties. The design of the bungalow includes some detailing, such as decorative coursing, sills and a hip roof. Purely in terms of design, the proposal does blend acceptably with surrounding residential properties. There are therefore no particular concerns over the design of the bungalow. Warwickshire County Council Highways Authority originally objected to the, to the proposal, but following amended plans they have no objection to the scheme, and as such the harm to highway safety is considered to be not severe. Overall, it is considered that the development is unacceptable given its backland location and is therefore re recommended for refusal. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> Thanks, Darren. Cheers. Mr. Chris Nash. Good evening. Uh, we recognise that this proposal doesn't compare to some of the other items on your agenda tonight, but I ask that you give it your considered attention. The site is ideal for the co-location of multiple generations and this proposal would provide for the applicant's elderly and increasingly dependent father-in-law. The harm claimed is that it would result in an incoherent and isolated development. Well, certainly not isolated. It's also not incoherent when having regard to number 97, as you can see before you on your screens, and the built backdrop of the Rivers Estate just off the top of the picture there. The officer notes that the site is put completely to hard standing, along with various structures, for all sense and purpose, it appears as a brownfield site, not as a garden. In any case, garden land can be used to provide for housing needs. Paragraph 53 has a very different context to that presented in the report. It does not command absolute protection of gardens, but instead recommends consideration of whether control is even needed when writing policy. Number 97 demonstrates how such development can be achieved without causing harm, and that property is generally indiscernible. The policy context when it was constructed is not the point, it's the fact that it already demonstrates the capacity for development of this nature. And page 65 of your agenda confirms that it would not be a new or alien pattern to the area. It should also be noted that the dwelling is vastly smaller and lower than number 97, making it completely indiscernible. The report states it would be more dominant than domestic outbuildings, but then confirms that it would not be visible from the public realm. Harm from development can only be demonstrable if it is apparent. This inability to appreciate any presence of the development immediately curtails the harm it can possibly bring about. Interestingly, the officer suggests that if the proposal were for an annex, conditions could address the harm. But this manner of occupation does nothing to affect the size and the very presence of the residential building here. If an annex is acceptable, then a bungalow should be too. Furthermore, a virtually identical building could be constructed as permitted development, as the report recognises, as could the division of the external space. In appreciable terms, there's little distinction between this fallback and the proposal. It should also be noted that the emerging plan proposes to enclose the land to the south of Bedworth Road, and over time this would further absorb this organic development into its built context. 
In considering the planning balance, the officer agrees that the provision of a new dwelling carries significant weight in favour. The presumption in favour of sustainable development applies, and any harm must significantly and demonstrably outweigh those benefits. There's no objection from neighbours or the highway authority, and I hope you will agree that the harm claimed cannot be demonstrated given the ability for you, I, or anyone else to appreciate the very existence of the development. Accordingly, we ask that the committee grant permission. Thank you. Uh, are there any points of clarification? No? Anything at the moment, Darren? No? <coughs> In that case, can I, to enable debate to take place, move the recommendation which is to refuse planning <coughs> permissions for the reasons as printed? Is that seconded? Any member? Councillor Beaumont. Uh, Chairman, members would note that this has been brought to the committee as a result of my intervention. Over a period of time, I've had neighbours who were worrying about this development, whose fears have been adequately dealt with in the proposals that are before us today. Um, and I must say that I do find it difficult in... Uh, exploring the next view on the uh, the, the uh, plans that are laid there, uh, this one here, the size of number 97 is enormous when compared with the proposal from this uh, from number 111, um, and to sweep it away uh, with the comment that uh, it was uh, subject to different planning conditions many years ago is to ignore the fact that it does set the context for this building along this uh, uh, Bedworth Road and the line of development at the front and this completes a line of development at the back which I think is perfectly reasonable. So uh, I would speak against uh, the refusal of officers and suggest that we agree the planning application and uh, I would move that if I could chair as an amendment is that yeah. acceptable amendment is right. the direct opposite to what's there okay. so I think people will vote for or against and if yeah. it's against then yours would have to become a proposal then right thank you okay um, any other member no anything at the moment Darren Okay, it's been moved and seconded the recommendation to refuse planning permission. All those in favour of that? And against? And abstentions? Oh, there's something, oh, there's something missing there. <coughs> Okay, so clearly the recommendation hasn't been agreed. So we need another proposal. Thank you, Chair. I would, I would therefore uh, propose that we agree the application. Is that simple enough? Seconded. That's seconded, okay. Thank you. All those in favour of approval... And against? Okay, so that's approved. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry if there was a bit of a delay there. It, it, it was actually myself. Uh, it, it, the normal circumstances are is to have the, the reasons for going against officer advice. But from what I heard, it was Councillor Beaumont's reason that there's been a precedent set. And, uh, members happy with that? Yeah.
Thanks, Chair. This application relates to an existing building to the rear of the car parking area to 46 and 48 Newtown Road in Bedworth. Both, pro both properties have been converted into flats, three in each property. The building is accessed through an undercroft between the two properties and is set to the far edge of the site along the northeast boundary. Although the building is old, having anecdotally been used as a stable in the past, it has recently been refurbished. Officers consider the key issues to consider here are the principle of the change of use, the impact on residential amenity, the impact on visual amenity, and the impact on highway safety and car parking. The, the, bu excuse me. the building is already there, and it is understood to have been vacant for several years. It was recently renovated and slightly enlarged under a recent planning permission. The proposal is to change the use of the building to a self-contained dwelling, which falls within a C3 use class. It is considered that the proposal would not significantly alter the character of the site or the wider area or how it operates, and that the use would blend acceptably with the surrounding residential uses. In regard to residential, res residential amenity, the distances between the proposed dwelling and the surrounding residential uses meet with the distance standards of the residential design guide. Overall, it is considered that the proposal would have no significant impact on the residential amenity of the surrounding area. In regards to the appearance, the building is not to change from its current form. The windows and other openings were approved under a previous permission. The change of use itself is considered to not create any significant harm to the visual amenity of the area. In regard to highway safety, the Highways Authority objected to the proposal as they had concerns over the lack of a turning area within the site and that the site was not suitable for an intensification of the use. Officers considered that the situation is largely an existing one and that this building would have, would have had a use in the past that could use this access, and therefore it is difficult to attribute any se severe harm to highway safety as a result of the proposed use. Overall, therefore, the proposal is recommended for approval subject to the conditions listed on the agenda. Thanks, Chair. Kyle Evans. Um, I've come to this committee this evening to raise my concerns with the application on Newtown Road to convert an unused property into a self-contained uh, property. The main concern I have with this application is to do with the access to the property. The undercroft between the two properties is extremely tight, and although cars can get through, I expect even good motorists would find the manoeuvre through the undercroft challenging. I'm sure all members of this committee will know that Newtown Road is one of the busiest roads in Bedworth and cars parked on both sides of the road makes the road more challenging and tighter so I'd expect doing the manoeuvre on Newtown Road would make it even more challenging. As I've just mentioned cars are parked on both sides of Newtown Road and on some occasions I have seen cars parked in front of the undercroft. Although there is a drop down curb in front of the undercroft in front of the property I think it, if this application was to be approved it would be appropriate for double yellow lines or possibly keep clear markings to be painted in front of the property. The objection from Warwickshire Highways Authority also supports some of the points that I have made. The objection from the Highways Authority states the site could result in vehicles maneuvering in the highway, partially entering the site only to have to reverse into live traffic. This comment from the HA states just how dangerous it could actually be for people entering in and out of the property. Also, based on the plans, I'd question whether there is enough space for parking and if there's enough room. If there's not, cars will only go onto Newtown Road if there's not enough parking spaces. All members will know that there are current issues with parking on Newtown Road, with people working in the town centre parking there, so actual residents on Newtown Road sometimes cannot park. Uh, on their own roads, so that is currently um, one of the issues. Um, in conclusion, I have always been in favour of developments like this, turning disused properties into housing. However, I believe this application could potentially lead to safety issues and could go on to cause accidents. Chair, I would call on all members of this committee to vote against the application, or at least vote to have a site visit, as I think it, it, is, it is important for all members to see the issue firsthand. Thank you. Clarification. Councillor Copeland. 
cars parked on both sides of the road. Um, I'm not aware that that's the case. There's cars parked on the pavement, but they're not parked on both sides of the actual road. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. No, I'm snooker player. Two moves out. No, um, of course I, you can. Uh, in all fairness, Councillor Co uh, Copeland, they're parked on the pavement, not the, the road. But, yeah, it still makes it tight. Are there points of clarification? No? In which case, can I... propose the recommendation... To enable, to enable debate to take place. Is it seconded? Any member wish to speak? Mm. Councillor Lloyd. Question been mentioned about traffic. We all know Newtown Road. Newtown Road's a monster and it is so, so busy. It is crazy, Newtown Road. They tried to move that round part, Newdigate Road, is a ring road at one stage, to get relieve uh, the traffic on Newtown Road. But the marketeers and every shop's worried about people going into non eating if we had a slip road, and it broke, so it never, ever got any. But Newtown Road, there, where that development is, Chair, the traffic is parked on the left-hand side as you go down. It is parked from park to just be coming off where the bollards are, where the road is on the left-hand side, all the way down to nearly to, to where the old Cleveland place is, is jammed with vehicles. They are parked on the other side of the road, but they're parked on the path. There is, it is jammed all the way down there. Now, the entrance to this, I have no objection, believe it or not, to the building. Oh, sorry, I... I, I I must declare, I do apologise, I've only just realised, in the house in front that I think these people own, my granddaughter has got a flat upstairs. I do apologise, I've just only just realised. Yeah, I, think they, I think they own it all, I'm not sure, that's why. Well, anyway, I've now declared whatever. The building at the back can take the development. I have no hassle, because I've seen it down there, I've been there to my granddaughter's, and they've partly got it done anyway, it can... It is parking, and getting in and out of there is a nightmare. There ain't nobody can hide it. Nobody can run away from it. It is there. You can see it every day. Uh, there, it is jammed to get in and out. It is just horrendous. There is a bit of land at the back. It's a questionable now. Do we believe they can turn round in it, or can't they turn round it? It's questionable. So I would like Chair to move and ask the committee to go and have a look. A site visit on there, go and have a look of, of, the, of the area, but not that the building, you'll see the building, it is the area inside where the vehicles can get in, and actually getting in through the archway. To get two cars can't pass in the archway uh, without breaking each other's mirrors. And I, I said, may I ask the committee, go and have a look, let's have a look at the dwelling where they, where they can turn, where they can put the vehicles in there, because whatever you like, I don't care who starts screaming and shouting, you cannot put another vehicle on Newtown Road on that left-hand side. It is impossible. And I'll stand and argue with anybody at this committee who wants to argue that point. Uh, I've only lived in there for 90 years. If it helps, I'll second that proposal, and I, I still want to speak on this as well. Councillor Copeland. Hand side here. Uh, there is a question I did want to ask, which will be helpful now and helpful after the survey. We have the building there as is, and I see the, the plans for it. If we were giving permission for it to happen, is it possible, uh, I hope I've not missed it, that we could have it that there's no extensions can happen? Uh, yep, yeah, that's a condition that could, that could be put on there. Um, normal residential properties do attract permitted development rights. This is a flat, so it wouldn't attract normal permitted development rights anyway, uh, but we could condition it so that there's no fences, walls, that, 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 that the ones that are universal 
um, yeah, that could be removed. Uh, but as it's a flat, it, it wouldn't attract any PD rights anyway. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Grant. Thank you, Chair. Previously, by um, Kyle and Councillor Lloyd. Uh, we, we all know how bad this road can be when it comes to parking. Uh, I certainly couldn't support this unless it was absolutely guaranteed that uh, it would not have to be parking problems on the road, but I just can't see it myself. Uh, while I personally don't need a site visit because I walk past there quite often and drive past there pretty much every day and can see it for myself and I know the area. But if everyone else feels like that would be helpful, I'd be happy to support that. In fact, I was going to second that before Bill did that. So, well, that's all I have to say on that anyway. This is an instance where local knowledge and county uh, highways are actually in sync, which is very unusual. <laughs> Um, for, for this committee and on that basis I won't be voting for a site visit because I think I know how I intend to vote anyway because all of us have driven down Newtown Road we all know it's very difficult to get even a fag packet between some cars down there most days um, and the fact that we actually have highways giving us an objection when we've all sat here on various different planning applications knowing what we know as local members and begging county highways to give us an excuse to actually go with our gut instinct. I think we have the perfect opportunity here. So on that basis, I don't feel as if I need a site visit and I wouldn't support the application in any event. Councillor Beaumont. I'd really just like to draw attention to the final paragraph about the impact on highway safety. It says, regardless, it is considered the above issues already exist and that the addition of one self-contained flat will have little, if any, more impact on the highway than currently exists, and that refusing the application on this basis would not stand up to scrutiny in an appeal. And it does seem to me that the reasons for approval which reflect that uh, are, I think, quite reasonable. Um, it doesn't really make much difference having another apartment there, and uh, it's considered it's already horrendous, and it won't be any more horrendous than it is now. So I, I think it's, uh, it's, it should be a done deal that we would approve it. In the planning applications, we talk about highway safety. Uh, the the uh, com competence of our drivers, I don't think they're really an issue that we should be uh, uh, bothering ourselves with too much, uh, especially things like... Uh, a dropped curb, a dropped curb indicates you shouldn't park there. You don't need double yellow lines and zigzags. You know, it's, it's, it's part of the highway code as it is. Uh, parking isn't very well enforced in this borough, I don't think, personally. Uh, and I'm a, agree, I think we, we shouldn't be get too concerned about the competency of drivers. Uh, in my opinion, 99% of them are rubbish. But whatever. Uh, <laughs> We, we're always being told we need the housing. I'm a bit perplexed that we've got a house here, a flat, or, or you know, that was a stable, that needs planning permission. Uh, you know, what, what's it being used for at the moment? It looks like it's a, a flat at the moment. Have I missed something there? Yeah, yeah OK, it's empty. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all in favour of this, this type of thing because it's, it's not really... Uh, I'm not sure as one house will make a big difference to housing need. But, uh, yeah, the more the, the more the merrier. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll try and put up with the interference from the mic. Um, the, this site has got a bit of history about it. There's been a number of occasions where they've tried to do things... In the, in, in the back of this and and although the, there aren't objections by our officers about it I think there are other reasons for this and I have to say I have a predisposition against this application I know that sounds tough because I proposed it but that was just to enable debate to take place and uh, <coughs> I like other speakers don't need the site visit but I think other mem some members may benefit from it and when you talk about the, the highway implications it's very dangerous it, it, any, any vehicle that goes under that archway and there's not many do it really apart from the applicant uh, partner 
when they visit the site because it's so dangerous getting out of it because although it's been said cars park on the pavement that's on the other side of the road when you come out of this arch you've got to go across the pavement and there are cars <coughs> parked up to that little access point so your visibility has gone when you pull out of there you can't pull onto Newtown Road without um, well if you're turning right it's not so much of an issue but even to turn left you have got to go onto the oncoming traffic to get onto Newtown Road and where I disagree with Councillor Beaumont is I actually think anything extra there does make the situation worse and um, it isn't just about that it's about if there were vehicles when and parked in the yard because that's what it was it was a yard I don't know what it was historically but it said it's a stable well it shouldn't be any more than that and it's only come to the attention of us really because of works being carried out to it without permission and so that's why it's come in front of us today to try and formalise that I even think even if it's one flat that is actually giving more we've got an, an, to me an overabundance at the moment of houses in multiple occupation or bed sits in this area You've got these ones either side and above <coughs> the entrance to this. You've got them across the road as well. And I think it's probably too much in that, that tiny area. So <coughs> there's other implications. The other thing which I feel quite strongly about is the environmental impact on the neighbouring properties. And, you know, again, we've got this and we would have to consider that but a site visit might show that cars going onto there both the uh, the fumes coming from the cars and the noise from cars starting up with the neighboring properties is also an impact so all those things if you do go on the site visit uh, should be should be looked at uh, I mean we'll have to see how the vote goes on that um, Yeah, I, I think I've kind of covered that. I've explained that I, I think it's backland development. It, the building was proposed to be a storage building and now they want somebody to, to live in it. OK, anything to come back on, Darren? OK, so uh, it was proposed and seconded a site visit and those reasons that I've heard have been the highway implications and the impact on the uh, neighbouring properties. Everybody happy? Everybody know what we're voting on? Yeah? All those in favour of a site visit for that? And against? And abstentions? Okay, so that that falls. Uh, I'll go back to the original proposal which I proposed to enable debate to take place and it was seconded. And we'll see where we go with that. And that was to grant planning permission subject to the conditions printed. All those in favour of that? And against? and abstentions. Okay, so the, the recommendation falls, uh, in which case, I'll mo <laughs> I'm moving everything here, aren't I? Can I? Can I move refusal on the grounds of highway implications and the impact on the neighbouring properties?
in in the main, I was. I mean, that is part of it. But in the main, I was talking about the when people are actually in the, the rear area with the, the 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 fumes and the noise from them starting their vehicles up. Okay, so is everybody clear on the reasons for refusal that have been moved and seconded? All those in favour of refusal? And against? And abstentions? Okay, that's refused. Thank you. And if we can move back then to item number... <laughs> which is one Rathbone close Kersley end Thank you, Chair. This application is for a change of use to the existing ground floor retail unit to a community facility and prayer room, a D1 use class. No external building works are proposed to the building and the first floor residential use is to remain. The existing unit is vacant and it is understood that this has been so for some time. The site is situated on a piece of land between Rathbone Close and Summers Road in Kersley within a small retail parade that originally comprised eight units with flats at first floor level. The key issues to consider here are the principle of the development, the impact on residential amenity, <coughs> the impact on visual amenity, and the impact on highway safety and car parking. The proposal is for the specific use of the unit as a community center and prayer room for use by the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. This community use would fall into a D1 use class. It is felt by officers that the change of use to this small, of this small unit to D1 would not adversely affect the surrounding existing centres due to size, location and the fact that the proposed unit has an existing permission as a town centre use. This application would, however, not necessarily attract a local neighbourhood catchment due to its specific use as an Ahmadiyya Muslim centre and no evidence of local demand for this use has been submitted with the scheme. The Council's environmental health team have raised concerns over the use and suggested that the hours of use take place between 8am and 8.30pm, Monday to Saturday. However, the applicant has indicated that they would likely to, to use the use outside of these hours, for example, for evening prayers during certain parts of the year. Ultimately, therefore, this condition would take away the benefit of the permission from the applicants and make the unit too restrictive for their use, and as such it is not considered suitable. Therefore, the harm presented by the proposal cannot be mitigated <coughs> by this hours condition, and it is considered that the potential for noise and disturbance would be too great. Um, there are no external changes proposed to the building, and as such, the impact on the proposal, uh, of the proposal on visual amenity will have no um, significant harm. However, um, bringing, it's recognised that bringing the dormant use back into, into an active use is a positive one. Warwickshire County Council Highways originally objected to the scheme, but this was subsequently removed, removed following the submission of a transport assessment. No, there is no dedicated off-street parking proposed with the use, and the transport assessment has demonstrated that there is a bus route past the site, and Highways Authority were happy with this sustainable transport option and the trips generated. Officers consider, however, that the lack of off-street car parking and the clear need for a non-sustainable transport mode due to the demand not being local would create an unsustainable development. In conclusion, it is considered that the proposal would create an unsustainable development with an over-reliance on the private car with no dedicated off-street car parking. The proposal would create further potential for dormant daytime uses within the local centre, and the proposal would create an unacceptable level of noise and disturbance to the surrounding properties by way of comings and goings, 
Therefore, the proposal is recommended for refusal as detailed on the agenda. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, to enable debate to take place, can I move the recommendation, which is to refuse planning permission? Is that seconded? Any member wish to speak? Councillor Grant. Just very brief of uh, recommendations in appraisal of the situation there. I'd just like to add that um, having sort of uh, walked past there before, went out delivering or canvassing or whatever, I just think it's a shame that this area isn't in use and that they're, that uh, it's, I just don't think this is the right way to bring it back into use. No, the recommendation is as printed to refuse planning permission. All, that, all those in favour of that? And against? And abstentions. Okay, so that's. I believe that concludes all the applications. Can I thank you very much for your attendance and declare the meeting closed? <laughs>